welcome to the basic trading kitchen today we are going to start off with menu number 5 of semester 2 of the first year syllabus the menu for today is velute dam lunch fillet of pomfret only the accompaniments as usual we'll have two accompaniments one will be a starch accompaniment the other will be a vegetable accompaniment the starch accompaniment today is bubble and squeak and the vegetable accompaniment is ratatouille now talking about the menu so in the first semester we have learned that thick soups can be classified into five categories cream puree chowder bisque and velouté in the duration of the first semester and in the previous practicals that you have seen in the second semester we have covered up three of the classic uh, thick soup categories we have seen cream soup puree soup and we have seen the chowder as well today we are going to learn how to make a velouté a velouté soup is a thin down version of a velouté sauce if you guys remember in a velouté sauce the base of the sauce is your white stock similarly in this soup that we are making today the base of this soup is going to be a white stock which will be made using chicken bones now the name of the dish is velouté dame blanche dame blanche in french means fair lady velouté sauce is slightly beige in color to convert this beige colored sauce into a white colored soup we are going to add two things to it first of all we'll be adding almond paste to it we have already blanched the almonds and then we have ground it to a paste and secondly for additional thickness and richness and to enhance the color of the soup we'll be adding a lazo which is a combination of egg yolk and fresh cream classically this soup is garnished with quenelles and for the quenelles we'll be using a mixture of chicken mince for binding we'll be adding some fresh bread crumbs for flavoring we'll be adding little bit of nutmeg powder and some salt for extra binding we may also add some egg white to the quenelle mixture now quenelle is not only the name of the mixture but also name of the shape so we'll be using two spoons and we'll be making the quenelle shapes now these quenelles can ideally be poached or they can also be fried i'll be showing you how to make the quenelles in both the fashion that is i'll be poaching a few and i'll be frying a few classically your soup is garnished with quenelles you will serve the soup piping hot moving on to the main course fillet of pomfret orly now as the name suggests we'll be using the pomfret fish in this particular dish orly is basically a suburb of paris and when applicable to a dish this denotes the presence of a white fish which has been batter fried so usually we use a white fish and the readily available white fish in this locality in this city is a black pomfret so we'll be using a black pomfret we have already shown you how to fillet a fish so we'll be filleting the black pomfret from one black pomfret we'll get four fillets then we'll marinate the fillets in salt pepper powder and lime juice once you have marinated the fish you'll allow it to rest for at least half an hour and then once you're ready to cook the fish you will dust the fish in a seasoned flour mixture as you might be aware seasoned flour again is a combination of refined flour salt and pepper powder white pepper powder for this we will be preparing a batter and for the batter we will be requiring egg yolk as well as egg white so using the egg yolk plus refined flour salt and white pepper powder along with water we will be preparing a thick batter and just before frying the fish we will be folding in some beaten egg whites okay, the egg whites will be folded just before frying the fish we'll fold the egg whites into the batter and we'll dip the fillets of fish into the batter and directly the fillets will go in hot oil we're going to deep fry the fish until the fish gets a nice golden brown color on the top and this particular dish is classically accompanied by a tomato sauce now this is the tomato sauce which is the french style tomato sauce which has bacon in it onion carrot bacon and celery you have already seen a video and a demo of how it is done moving on to the starch accompaniment which is bubble and squeak now bubble and squeak ideally is made using leftover potatoes and vegetables from the roast dinner now when you call out use the term roast dinner it is usually roast beef roast beef is always accompanied by again a starch and usually the roast the accompaniment is roasted potatoes the leftover potatoes from usually the sunday night dinner are transformed into this particular accompaniment 
so we take the potatoes we mash them up and to this we will be adding a few vegetables as per our recipe we are adding some chopped cabbage chopped capsicum and chopped onion ideally this particular dish is made in a cast iron pan we melt the butter or the oil in the cast iron pan and we actually press the vegetable mixture into the cast iron pan and we cook the mixture until it is completely brown from one surface and then we flip it over and cook it on another side today we are going to make a slight variation to the recipe wherein we are going to make vegetable cutlet size uh, bubble and squeaks right moving on to the accompaniment the vegetable accompaniment which is ratatouille it is a very very classical french accompaniment it comes from the provencal region of france which is near to italy which is close by to italy that is why you will see italian influence in this particular dish italian influence comes in the form of the tomato sauce we will be making a tomato sauce which will have onion and garlic right we will be cooking the tomato sauce in olive oil again because it is near italy we'll be using olive oil for making the sauce rather than using plain oil the onion will be chopped garlic will be chopped and the tomatoes will be blanched and concast the concasting technique has already been taught to you in the first semester once the sauce is ready then we'll be adding a few vegetables to the tomato sauce the vegetables over here that we're using is aubergines marrow and along with that we're using green bell pepper the aubergine and the marrow will be cut into dices then coated with olive oil salt and pepper and we'll be roasting them in the oven the capsicum will be just sauteed in oil these vegetables will be added to your tomato sauce combined together and classically again this particular dish is garnished with then the loop then the loop means wolf's teeth okay but for that we'll be using some bread fresh bread which will be cut into triangles and then deep fried after deep frying we will coat the edges or the tips of this bread with the tomato sauce and then roll them out in some finely chopped parsley and we'll be garnishing our particular ratatouille with two such then the loops so the ratatouille will be in the center and these two uh, wedges of bread will be pierced peering out out of the ratatouille so it looks like wolf's teeth or hound's teeth coming out of the ratatouille so that is the menu for today right ingredients now as for the menu we require the chicken carcass for making the white stock which will be used for making the soup the onion goes in three dishes today we are dividing the onion into three portions one fourth of the onion goes in the stock plus the carrot and the celery leaves the leaves will be discarded that is and the stock will be utilized this is the chicken mince mixture which will be used for making the quenelles this is the almond paste which will uh, lighten the soup the color of the soup plus the egg which will be used for making the lazo moving on to the fish for that fish we require lime plus parsley and the egg for making the batter moving on to the starch accompaniment which is bubble and squeak we require the potatoes along with the potatoes we will be using the onion some of the capsicum will be used for this particular dish along with the cabbage moving on to the vegetable accompaniment which is your ratatouille for the ratatouille we will be needing the aubergine the capsicum tomatoes remaining leftover onion marrow and the garlic the bread will be also used for the garnishing for your ratatouille the leftover egg can be used for making a batter or will be used for making the chicken mince mixture which is the quenelle mixture the egg white will go in that and this is how you will divide the ingredients as per the menu the fish has already been filleted now we are going to marinate the fish we are going to cut the lime into wedges we will be removing three wedges out of the lime we will cut the lime at an angle so we will end up with three wedges the center part of the lime will be used for making the marination we will extract the juice from the center part of the lime make sure that the wedges of lime do not have any seeds in it because the wedges will be used along with the fish they will be served along with the fish the center part of the lime will be squeezed out and will take out the juice from the lime if you feel that the juice is less then you can then you can also use one of the wedges all the seeds of the lime obviously will be discarded 
we are using some the juice from the wedge one of the wedge as it is this particular preparation will be prepared only for two portions two fillets are ideally served per portion of this size we are marinating the fish in a mixture of salt white pepper and lime juice now we will gently transfer the fillets of fish into the marination make sure that the fillet is completely coated with the marination and be gentle with the fish as you know fish has very very delicate flesh and it tends to flake off or break very easily so you need to be specially careful while doing this you can even wear gloves and handle the fish if you want to that will be a bit more easier once the fish has been marinated then you can transfer the fish into the refrigerator it will remain in the refrigerator until you are ready to cook the fish moving on to the white stock now we are peeling the carrot we are going to roughly chop all the vegetables that is the mirepoix vegetables onion carrot celery because the vegetables are not going to be seeded in the final dish it does not make any difference as to how you chop the vegetables make sure that the vegetables are evenly chopped but the onions the celery and the carrot if you want to you can even omit the carrot in this particular dish because carrot will lead lead to a orange colored stock slightly orange colored stock and the stock which we are making today has to be white is that is why if you notice the carrots have been chopped up into large pieces so that they don't leach out too much of the color into the stock you can also as i said you can completely omit the carrot if you want to if you choose to do so the tomatoes have already been blanched we are going to remove the outer skin of the or peel of the tomato and we want to concast them for that we will be first removing the seeds of the tomato the seeds have to be collected do not discard them because we will be passing the seeds through a soup strainer because the seeds also contain a lot of flavor as well as a lot of tomato juice we don't want that to go to waste so we will be keeping them aside make sure that all the seeds have to be removed out are completely removed out and then we are going to chop up the tomatoes very very finely which is a which is a which is known as concassing the tomato so very finely chopped tomato blanched tomato is ready now we are going to strain the seeds through a soup strainer and we will be adding the juices of the tomato along with the tomato flesh we don't want the seeds to be present in the sauce that we are making the seeds of the tomato are not digestible right so the, for that reason we do not want the seeds to be present in the sauce we want a kind of smooth sauce that is why we are straining off the tomato seeds moving on to the vegetables firstly we will remove the sides of the bread because the bread has to be deep fried we will cut the bread into four triangular pieces and then we will deep fry them if you want to you can even roast or bake the bread in an oven but ideally they are deep fried the sides of the bread can be discarded or ideally what they do with it is it is converted into bread crumb and it is utilized somewhere else the marrow has to be peeled you peel it properly using a peeler make sure that none of the skin is visible on the flesh once the marrow has been peeled properly then we will cut it into dices if you are planning to uh, cut the marrow at a later period of time or planning to cook the marrow at a later period of time it is advisable to put the marrow after peeling it into a pot of water so that it does not oxidize i am removing the outer flesh of the marrow now i am discarding the seeds as i did with the tomatoes the outer flesh will be cut into 1 cm cubes ideally 1 cm cubes all the marrow has to be cut into 1 cm cubes and then we'll proceed to the next vegetable which is the aubergine which is also known as the eggplant or in india we call them as brinjals remove the stalk cut out the stalk of the brinjal and then cut it into 1 cm thick slices 
and then as we did with the marrow we are going to cut them into 1 centimeter dices make sure that the size and shape of the dices of the vegetables are uniform so that both of them cook at the same time we are cooking the marrow and the aubergine together in the oven if you want to you can just steam them or if you can even boil them once you are done with the cutting of the marrow and the aubergine we will take them in a baking dish and then we will be adding olive oil to it so that they don't burn completely while they have been put in the oven as seasoning we will be adding salt and for flavoring we will be adding some white pepper powder the olive oil as i said will prevent the marrow and the aubergines from burning off make sure that the each and every piece of the vegetable is coated with this oil once the vegetables are coated with oil then they will be transferred into the oven at 160 degrees celsius for 15 to 20 minutes moving on to the next vegetable which is your capsicum or green bell pepper deseed the capsicum and then cut it into dices ideally all the pieces of the capsicum should be of the same size transfer it onto a plate and we'll saute them when we are cooking the dish moving on to the bubble and squeak we have taught you how to boil the potatoes how to dry the potatoes and now we are mashing the potatoes we are mashing the potatoes you are passing the potatoes through a soup strainer so that you get a smooth textured potato mixture once the potatoes have been mashed up then we will flavor the potatoes with salt and pepper as i said bubble and squeak contains vegetables and the vegetables which we are using in this recipe are onions cabbage and green capsicum so these vegetables will be finely chopped up and then they will be added to the potato mixture shred the cabbage finely and then chop it up as finely as possible this is going to be inside the potato mixture make sure that the onions and the cabbage and even the capsicum are of even size so all of them cook at the same time first cut into juliennes and then chop it up into fine granola add this to the potato mixture and then we are going to season it using salt we are seasoning the bubble and sweet mixture with salt and we are flavoring it with some white pepper powder combine the vegetables thoroughly with the potato mixture using a spatula you have to combine it well and a spatula is one of the best tools that you can use for doing this job this is the white stock which has been on the flame for approximately 45 to 45 minutes to an hour now we are straining it off the bones are going to be discarded we don't need the bones we just want the liquid we just want the white stock the flavor of your soup is going to be totally dependent on the flavor of the stock if the stock is not flavorful your soup is not going to be flavorful making the velouté soup this is approximately a liter of white stock we have taken 75 grams of butter and 75 grams of refined flour for it if you are making if we were making a velouté sauce we would have taken 100 grams of butter and 100 grams of refined flour that is the ratio for making any sauce 1 is to 1 is to 10 one part of butter one part of flour and 10 parts of liquid but because we want to make a soup which is considerably thinner than a sauce we have reduced the amount of flour and butter that is we have reduced the amount of roux we are going to cook it until it reaches the blond stage this is the white roux stage when the mixture starts frothing up we are going to cook it a bit further until it reaches the blond stage that is you can see specks of brown in the mixture it has just started browning at that point we'll add in the white stock to the mixture and we'll whisk it properly we'll make sure that no part of the roux is stuck to the bottom of the pan 
and we will use a spatula to clear the edges of the pan. Then we will continue to whisk until we reach the right consistency. This is the pouring consistency of a thick soup. At this stage we will switch off the gas. Moving on to the quenelle now. This is chicken mince. Chicken mince will be taken in a bowl or a plate. To the chicken mince, we will be adding some salt for seasoning, some white pepper powder for flavoring and along with that we will also be adding some nutmeg to it. Nutmeg has to be grated freshly. We have to control the amount of nutmeg that we are adding in the mixture because nutmeg is a very very strong flavored spice. It can overpower the dish if you add extra of it. After the nutmeg, we will be adding some egg white to it. Egg white will provide the binding to your quenelle. The egg yolk can be utilized for making mayonnaise. Because we are not using mayonnaise in this particular menu, so we will be using it some, some other time. Combine the egg white with the chicken mince thoroughly. You can do that using a whisk or even a spatula. Once the entire mixture has formed a homogeneous mass, then we will start making the quenelles. For making a quenel, we need two same sized spoons. The spoons have to be of the same size and same shape as well. Along with that, I have kept a mug with hot water on the side so that the chicken mince does not stick to the spoon. We are going to shape the quenelles in the form that you are seeing in the video right now. We are going to press the mince mixture into the spoon so that the mixture gets a quenelle shape. These quenelles will directly be added into the velouté soup that we have prepared. So ideally they are being poached inside the velouté soup. We can also poach them in plain chicken stock if you want to. The essential thing that you require for making a quenelle is two same sized and same shaped spoons. Without these you will not be able to make a proper chicken quenelle or a proper meat quenelle. And it is also essential that you keep on dipping the spoons in water so that the meat mixture does not stick to the spoons. The other way of making the quenelle is you make wet your hands, wet your palms and you make round balls out of the meat mixture and then using the back of the knife we are going to make an indention in the quenelle so that it looks like a grain of barley. This is also a way in which quenelle can be shaped for this particular recipe, for this particular dish. These shaped quenelles are going to be deep fried. I am not going to poach them. These are going to be deep fried and then they will be served along with the soup. These look like grains, barley grains. Quenelles, once they start to float on the surface, it's an indication that they are done. Once they are done, we'll remove them out from the soup and keep them aside until we are ready to serve the soup. The quenelles will be removed out onto a plate or a platter or a bowl and we'll use them, as I said, when we are ready to plate the soup or serve the soup. These are the poached quenelles. We also have a few fried quenelles which I will show you in some time. To convert this velute soup to velute dam blanche, we will be adding the almond paste to it. The almonds have been blanched that is we have soaked the almonds in hot water and then the outer peel has been removed out and then we have ground it to a fine paste in wa with water. As soon as you add the almond paste, the color of the soup changes immediately. It becomes much much lighter. The egg yolk which was left behind when you made the quenel mixture will be used for making the laser over here. Make sure that the almond mixture has completely mixed up with the soup. We will be making the laser by combining the egg yolk with fresh cream. The ratio of fresh cream to egg yolk is 1 is to 3. That is one part of egg yolk and three parts of fresh cream. We will be combining the egg yolk with the fresh cream properly, thoroughly using a spoon or a fork. 
so that once you add this mixture to the soup they don't separate out to this mixture we will be adding the hot soup we are going to temper the laser now the hot soup will be added little by little little by little into the egg yolk and cream mixture if you add the laser directly to the hot soup the chances of the egg splitting and curdling increase to prevent that from happening we are basically enhancing increasing the temperature of the laser mixture once the laser has come up to the temperature of the soup then we will transfer the laser into the hot soup after adding the laser to the hot soup you cannot vigorously heat the soup because the chances of the egg splitting increase that way and that will that will create a problem with the appearance of the soup now we are going to flavor the soup and season the soup we are going to add little bit of water to the mixture of salt and white pepper we do not add white pepper directly to the soup because the white pepper might form lumps when you add it to the soup in powdered form that is why we combine the pepper and the salt with water and then add this slurry to the soup if you want the soup to be absolutely white in color and if you are afraid that the white pepper might affect the appearance of the soup you can omit the addition of white pepper in this particular recipe but salt is essential now moving on to the vegetable accompaniment that is ratatouille we'll be first heating up some olive oil in a pan to that we'll be adding the cut bell peppers we're going to saute the bell peppers in hot olive oil until they char a bit we're not going to cook them completely in the oil we just going to saute them in hot oil once they have been sauteed we'll remove them out and keep them aside and then we'll add them to the dish at the final stage we don't want the peppers to completely overcook now we'll be adding some finely chopped onion and finely chopped garlic in the same pan if you want you can add some additional oil to the pan saute the onion and garlic we don't want the onion and garlic to brown once the onion and garlic has sauteed then we'll add in the concash tomatoes along with the juices from the seeds of the tomatoes cook the tomatoes along with the onion and garlic until the raw flavor from the tomatoes vanishes this will take good 5 to 10 minutes depending on the quantity of the tomatoes that you have if you want to enhance the color of the tomatoes you can also add some tomato puree or tomato paste to this particular sauce cook this until the tomatoes are fully done if you feel that there is less moisture in the mixture we can add some water to it as well cook the tomato mixture completely instead of water you may also add white stock if it is handy if it is handy once the tomatoes are cooked then we'll add in some white wine to the mixture and it has reached the right consistency we'll be seasoning the mixture with salt pepper and we'll be adding in we'll be adding in the cooked vegetables the bell peppers and the marrow and the aubergines that were cooked in the oven that were roasted in the oven we'll be seasoning it with salt and flavoring the mixture with pepper powder and this is your ratatouille make sure that you do not over mix the mixture if you over mix the chances of the vegetables mashing up increase we don't want the vegetables to mash up in this mixture in this preparation the vegetables you should be able to identify each and every vegetable we have put in so much effort into cutting the vegetables in the right size and shape if you mix mash them up at the last moment it does not make any sense the tips of the bread which were deep fried will be coated in the finely chopped parsley and these will be served alongside the ratatouille as then the loops now we are making the batter for the orly mixture we will be taking refined flour to the refined flour we will be adding the egg yolk and salt pepper plus water these four ingredients will be used for making the batter initially we will be making a thick batter make sure that you separate out the egg yolk and the egg whites properly 
no part of the egg yolk should fall into the egg white because the egg whites have to be stiffly beaten if there is some egg yolk along with the egg whites you will not be able to beat them stiffly we want stiff peaks from the mixture along with this we'll be adding some baking soda so that the mixture becomes slightly airier and lighter we'll be adding water and we'll be whisking the mixture to get a smooth thick batter a whisk is the best tool that can be used for this particular job because it can go to each and every corner each and every side of the pan whisk it thoroughly so that there are no lumps in the batter keep on adding water little by little because you can always add extra water as i've always say you can always add extra water but it's very difficult to remove extra water if you have added it initially itself so add water little by little until you get the right consistency the batter has to be thick it has to coat the fish properly it cannot just drip off the fish so the batter has to be of the right consistency mix it whisk it properly until all the lumps in the batter disappear that's why i told you that a whisk is the best tool that you can use for this particular job this is the consistency that we are looking for now we're going to make the seasoned flour mixture in which the fish is going to be dusted seasoned flour is nothing but a combination of refined flour plus salt and white pepper powder so combine these three things together and then we're going to coat the fish in this seasoned flour mixture the potato mixture for the bubble and squeak will first shape the potatoes or we'll portion them out first and then we'll shape them into round cutlets or tikki shapes make sure that each and every portion is of the same size we are going to serve two to three portions of these cutlets or bubble and squeak per portion so they have to be of the ideal or the proper shape and size shape them properly roll them over the chopping board on the chopping board so that the edges become firm and they don't fall apart when you fry them after you have shaped the potato then we'll dust them in the seasoned flour mixture we are first using the seasoned flour mixture for dusting the bubble and squeak and then we'll use the same seasoned flour mixture for dusting our fish we cannot do the other way round because if we first coat the fish in the seasoned flour mixture the chances of the potato getting the flavor of the fish increase also there will be cross contamination to avoid that from happening we'll first coat the potatoes and then in the same seasoned flour mixture we will be coating the fish shape the bubble and squeak properly pat them properly make sure that each and every piece of bubble and squeak portion of bubble and squeak is of the same size and preferably preferably of the same shape as well we'll transfer them out onto a plate and then we'll shallow fry them we are going to shallow fry these bubble and squeak in a nonstick pan we can use a cast iron pan or any other pan for this purpose once the oil heats up in the pan then we'll be adding the bubble and squeak into the pan we are going to fry these on each side until they become nice golden brown in color you have to be careful while doing this if the potatoes are not dried properly the chances of the potatoes bursting open the bubble and squeak bursting open increase that's why it's very essential that you dry the potatoes properly in the first stage itself if you feel that the potatoes are not retaining the shape it is indication that the potato or the bubble and squeak uh, is not retaining the shape is indication that the potatoes were not dried properly they had a lot of moisture in them when you added the other vegetables to it if you find you yourself in such a situation you can always add little bit of fresh bread crumbs to provide binding to the mixture the bubble and squeak is ready it has turned nice golden brown on both sides now we'll transfer them on a tissue paper or a kitchen towel to absorb the excess oil
moving on to the main course filia pomfret orly the fish had been marinating in the uh, in the refrigerator for more than an hour now we're going to pat them dry to get rid of all the excess moisture we're going to use a clean dry duster for this purpose after the fish has dried up then we transfer them into the seasoned flour mixture make sure that the fish is completely coated with the seasoned flour mixture and then we we'll transfer them onto a clean dry plate we are not going to add the fillets into the batter at this point of time we'll be adding the fillets to the batter just before frying the fillets of fish each and every every fillet has to be completely coated with the seasoned flour the batter is thick now we're going to beat the egg white until it reaches the stiff peak stage the egg white which i am using over here is slightly older that is why it is not reaching the stiff peak using a fork so i am changing the fork to egg beater and using the egg beater i am going to beat the egg white until it reaches the stiff peak stage once it reaches the stiff peak stage then i will fold in this egg white into the batter i'll be using the spatula for this particular purpose i don't want all the air that has been trapped into the egg white to escape out if i use a whisk to combine the egg white with the batter all the air which is trapped inside the egg white will be will escape out so gently fold in the mixture fold in the egg white into the thick batter once the egg white has been folded into the batter then we'll take the fish along with the batter near the fryer we'll dip one fillet of fish at a time in the batter and the fish will be directly transferred into the hot oil we are going to put one fillet into the batter at a time we are not going to add all the fillets into the batter together this ensures that the air does not escape in from the batter so fry the fish in the hot oil until it becomes golden brown in color you will have to flip over the fish once during the cooking process so that it gets evenly brown from both the sides cook the fish for 2 to 3 minutes in hot oil until it reaches the right color it has to be golden brown from all the sides so flip the fish over as i said to ensure even cooking depending on the size of the fillet you might require less or more time these size fillets will take anywhere between 3 to 4 minutes to cook properly this is the color which is desired in fish only golden brown color once the fish is cooked then we'll transfer it onto a tissue paper or a kitchen towel to absorb the excess oil and then we'll be plating these dishes together the fish has to be served while it is hot to begin off we are posting out our velouté dam blanche into a soup bowl we are using a ladle to do this and also if you notice i am wearing gloves now because i'll be handling cooked food whenever you are handling cooked food you cannot use your bare hands for that purpose for that for that reason i am using gloves the quenelles which were poached inside the soup will be served along with the soup and these are the pieces of chicken mix mixture which were deep fried so you can serve either one of them either the poached version or the deep fried version i'm serving both of them in this particular dish two fillets will be served per portion as i told you pomfret orly is served classically accompanied classically with by a uh, tomato sauce so we are serving some french tomato sauce along with it bubble and squeak two portions or two pieces of bubble and squeak per portion along with that we'll be serving the veg accompaniment which is your ratatouille so ratatouille will be placed on the platter and along with that we'll be serving the triangle of bread the then the loop and this is how you will serve the menu for garnishing i'm serving i'm placing a frond of fennel on top 